Hello and welcome back to News Minutes, the 25th of September and right now it's time for a quick Guild Wars 2 news update. Those amongst you, probably most of you, currently playing Guild Wars 2 over Mists of Pandaria would probably be interested in knowing what was done to your beloved game on this fateful day. Wonder no more. Let's have a look at the update notes for September the 25th, 2012. I'll just warn you right away that there's going to be a lot of text on your screen, so if you want to, you can just minimize this video and listen. In the general changes, there were a couple of slightly less interesting changes and fixes made to the game engine and world. These were pretty much just little things that players couldn't help but abuse, or just needed fixing. There were a lot of them, and I'm not going to cover every single one right here. But let's have a look at the good stuff. All recipe items are now account bound. The lone one copper reward from city map completion was removed. Mystic Forge recipes that were being used to reduce surplus supplies have been removed. Enemies in tutorial areas will no longer drop loot. Instead, an award of 72 copper has been added to the rewards for completing the tutorial. This is to dissuade players from lingering in the tutorial instances to farm creatures in them. I'm not sure why someone would want to do that, but... Hey, whatever. Lastly, in the general changes, obsidian shards are now account bound. In the Black Lion Trading Company changes, functionality and improvements have been added and made to the Black Lion chests, including a chance to receive new items like a permanent version of the Black Lion Trader Express, which I'd really, really love to get my hands on. And Black Lion salvage kits now properly display the correct percentages for rare materials. In the story changes, a whole bunch of personal story steps have had their difficulty tuned. End of story loot bags have been reduced from 3 to 5 and been improved to give only green or better gear of level 78 and higher. Lastly in this section, we've been told that more improvements will be made in the coming weeks and players who complete the story before the final update will be equally compensated once the new rewards are in. Now the dungeon changes, the big changes of this patch. Firstly, there were a whole bunch of fixes, buffs, nerfs and tweaks made to a whole bunch of the dungeons. I'm not going to be covering all of those here, but you can read them below. Vendors in the Ascalonian Catacombs and Cordicus Manor have been updated. They now sell level 80 versions of their unique skins rather than level 60 and 70. Players who purchase the level 60 and 70 versions will soon be given the opportunity to upgrade those to level 80 without having to use transmutation stones. Some significant changes and updates have been made to dungeon rewards and these were actually made because of an exploit. The exploit allowed players to receive upwards of 20 levels by completing a single dungeon run. After some fixing, testing and tinkering by ArenaNet, the result is this new system which should increase dungeon rewards for players who play through them normally, but also help curb inflation of rewards for those using exploitative methods to farm them. So let's have a look at this new system. Dungeon tokens are now rewarded at the end of an explorable chain. Dungeons reward 20 tokens for completion and now reward an additional 40 tokens for the first time they completed each day. So yes, daily dungeons. And this means that if a player can complete all three chains of a dungeon in a day, they'll receive a total of 180 tokens. Which is actually already enough to purchase some of the smaller rewards. Just like that. And lastly, dungeon tokens are now account bound. So if you're getting tokens on one character that you're not quite sure you're going to need on it, just send it to one of your alts. Why the heck not? I'm all for this new system and it sounds absolutely amazing to me. After all of that, there were some class changes made to the Elementalist, Engineer, Guardian, Mesmer, Necromancer and Thief. Then just a few smaller race, PvP and World vs World changes. That's it. If you want to give the full patch notes a read for yourself, you can find them linked below. And if that somehow wasn't enough, let's have a look at a couple of smalls. First up, ArenaNet's latest blog post is all about art. It features an interview with concept artist Jamie Rowe and a whole bunch of amazing Guild Wars 2 artwork definitely worth checking out. She discusses the role of a concept artist pre and post launch and more. In a slightly older post, Mike O'Brien discussed account security, free world transfers are now limited to one every 24 hours, and lastly, Wooden Potatoes has started his rather informative Guild Wars 2 Let's Play up. Check that out right here on YouTube. That's it for this episode. Check back here soon for more. Like the video and do all that other good stuff. And most importantly, happy farming those dungeons. And collecting those tokens. Happy that.